natural history of any disorder would be the disorder uh, as it is without any treatment whatsoever. But today, people with homocystinuria have had some degree of treatment. They have either been on a diet or they've taken betaine or they've been on a diet and taken betaine or they might be on any kind of other kinds of treatments that have tended to maybe change homocystinuria in one degree or another. And so consequently, uh, what we call, what is called a natural history is really a history of homocystinuria as it exists today. That is how people with HCU are today with any of the various treatments that they've had and with any of the different levels of homocysteine that they've been able to have over the years. And the reason for this so-called natural history study is so that when a new treatment is being discovered and being studied, um, we will know how well it works based upon how people are today. And so a natural history study today then gives the sponsors and companies that are developing these new treatments a way of understanding of how the study of the new treatment should be conducted. In other words, what are the different levels of homocysteine, for instance, that individuals with homocysteinuria have today? Uh, on whatever particular treatment they happen to be on. What kinds of problems that they have had? Have they had eye problems or maybe they haven't had eye problems because maybe their eye problems have been prevented with early treatment of homocystinuria or they may have uh, uh, problems with their bones uh, to one degree or another or they may have had, for instance, a, a blood clot at one particular point, which is perhaps uh, clear now, or perhaps has left them with some degree of impairment, um, uh, or they may have some difficulties in understanding things or difficulties in their schoolwork, uh, difficulties in their psychological uh, well-being. Uh, so it, it really is a snapshot of how individuals with homocystinuria are today. That informs uh, the uh, people who are developing the study of the new drug, how the study should be conducted. Uh, what kinds of levels of homocysteine uh, should be attained in the study uh, and how to evaluate the outcome of the study in relation to how people with homocystinuria uh, before they were given this new treatment. In the natural history study, uh, the, uh, individuals are told that they should continue whatever treatment they're on. They shouldn't change that at all. In other words, we want to know what they are like with whatever treatment they are taking, whether they are, take, are on diet or whether they're not on diet whether they're taking betaine or whether they're not taking betaine, uh, whether they are adhering to the diet, all of those things, we want them to continue that. And so therefore, one can compare how they are when they are given the drug with how they were uh, before they were given the drug. My name is Danae Barkey, and I am the executive director of HCU Network America, as well as an adult classical homocystinuria patient. Both myself and my brother were diagnosed with classical homocystinuria. Um, much later in life, my brother was five at the time of his diagnosis, and I was uh, 10 years old. It is important for classical homocystinuria patients to know about natural history studies because it helps us understand our own patient journey and what to expect, and also to know if these things are related to classical homocystinuria or if they are just part of everyday life as a, as a person. It is important to participate in a natural history study because as Dr. Levy alluded to earlier, 
The last natural history study was published in 1985, which happens to be the year I was born. At that time, universal screening did not exist in the United States, and premium medical formulas were not even on the market yet. In 1995, the year my brother and I were diagnosed, the estimated life expectancy was 30 years old, and I was told it was too dangerous to ever have my own children. Now in my late 30s, with a child of my own, and with many more treatment options available and newborn screening existing across all 50 states, a lot has changed, and patient outcomes do not look the same as they did then. If you Google homocystinuria, the pictures that come up from patients then look very different than they do now. It is imperative that an updated natural history study takes place to reflect the current patient population.